Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello. 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 Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you guys? I'm fine. And you? I'm very good. I'm A little good. bit hot. The weather today is hot, right? It's not cold. I don't like hot weather. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining on time. Thank you for being here. And I want to start sharing my screen so you can help me with a quick activity. Um, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, very good. So help me with this, guys. Um, we have she work in a shop. What do you think is the correct auxiliary here? Does. Does. Okay. Does she work in a shop? Very good. Then we have Mr. Jenkins, my class math. He's really good. What about this one? Mr. Jenkins teaches, teach or teaches? Teaches. Letter A. Exactly. Mr. Jenkins teaches my class math. Very good. Okay, my friends together in the library every Saturday morning. What is the correct option here? C. Letter C, study. Exactly, very good, study. My friends study together in the library. Does your grandpa in a shop? Letter A. Letter A, are you sure about letter A? Does your grandpa in a shop? When we make questions, be. do we modify the verb in third person? Remember that yeah. we don't. We don't yeah. change it because for you see does. Okay, my dad breakfast at work because she's he starts very early. B. B. B, letter B, yes. are you sure? My dad has. have, let's see, has. no, it has, has. Has. has, letter A, my dad has breakfast. What is the correct question? And we have option one, what does you drink at breakfast? Letter B, what you drink at breakfast? Or letter C, what do you drink at breakfast? What do you think, guys? Letter C, letter C. What do you drink at breakfast? Breakfast. Excellent. <clears throat> Ronnie want a drink. No, he. Doesn't. What do you think? Okay. We Where have something he? here. Here? Let her be. Yeah. Does Ronnie want a drink? No, he doesn't. Very good. She teach history. Doesn't. Doesn't. She doesn't teach history. Very good. Now we have, do you a uniform at your school? Use for A. Letter A. Letter In a. this case, I'm going to correct you guys. When we wear. talk about clothes, t-shirts, wear. jeans, wear. This one, wear, okay? For clothes, we only use wear. We don't use use. Uh, they live in a big city. Is that right or wrong, guys? They live. They live in a big city. What do you think? Correct. Not correct. Incorrect. Incorrect. Why? They, la they live. They live, exactly. We have the S here and we shouldn't have letter S here. Okay. Amazing, my friends. Very, very good job. <clears throat> now, let's go with today's topic and presentation. Today, we are going to talk a little bit about countable and uncountable nouns. Maybe some of you know about this topic already, but we are going to um, 
study this topic a little bit more, all right? So let me see, Jeffrey Escobar, can you read the definition for countable and uncountable nouns, please? Okay, countable nouns can be counted. For example, an apple, two apples, three apples, etc. Uncountable nouns cannot be counted. Example, air, rice, water, etc. Okay, very good. So basically, guys, this is very simple. Countable, we can count. Uncountable, we can't count it. There is no way that we can count it. Examples of countable, apples, eh, watermelons, shoes, t-shirts, cell phones, computers. That is something that we can count. Uncountable nouns, air, water, sugar, rice, oil. Those are the things that we can't count. Así que así hagámonos la idea. Countable, lo que sí podemos contar. Uncountable, lo que no se puede contar. And that's it, okay? Um, any questions about the definition? ¿Se entiende que es algo countable y algo uncountable? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. Any questions so far? No. no. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, very good. Let's continue. So here, we're going to stop here a little bit so we can talk about how we can form a sentence when we use countable and when we use uncountable nouns. In this part, guys, please pay attention, all right? Number one, for countable nouns, eso quiere decir lo que sí podemos contar, countable nouns, they have singular and plural form. ¿Qué quiere decir singular form, guys? What is singular form? Just one, right? Just one. Singular one. is just one. And when we refer to plural, two, three, four. ¿Qué quiere decir que tienen una forma singular y una forma plural? Que usted lo puede poner como singular y también como plural. A tree, two trees. A book, two books. Eh, a computer, two computers. ¿Cómo hacemos algo plural? En la mayoría de casos le agregamos la S. Así que con los countable nouns podemos dejarlos solitos cuando los hablemos de formas singulares o podemos hacerlos eh, plurales, agregándole la S. Sí se puede, ¿ok? That's rule number one. Rule number two. We can use a singular verb or a plural verb. Con este verb nos vamos a referir específicamente al verb to be, ¿ok? ¿Cuál es la forma del verb to be que se ocupa para singular? Is. Is. Is, exactly. So, the book is old. Tenemos el ejemplo ahí. One book, singular form. And we have the plural form of the verb to be, which is are. The books are old. You see? Book con la S porque estamos hablando de plural y el verb to be para plural. The books are old. The apple is delicious. The apples are delicious. So los countable nouns sí los podemos usar así. Singular en plural y también con el verb to be en singular en plural. Eso es acerca de los countable nouns. ¿Se entiende esa parte? Is it clear? Got it. Yes, no questions yes. about this? No. Okay, very good. Um, I have a person in the list, en una persona que su nombre dice Lenovo Tab M10HD. Eh, ¿Se cambia el nombre, su nombre completo, por favor? Porque si no, no le voy a poder poner la asistencia. Dice Lenovo, Lenovo Tab, la chica de blusa María. Por favor, cámbiese su nombre eh, y se pone su full name. Si no, no le voy a poder poner la asistencia. Ok, guys, let's move on. 
So now we have uncountable nouns. Remember the uncountable nouns, lo que no podemos contar, what we can't count. And we have rule number one. Have only one form. Solo tienen una forma y esa forma es singular. ¿Qué quiere decir forma singular? O sea que nosotros no le vamos a agregar ese a eso. ¿Ok? Only one form. Y tenemos el ejemplo de butter. What is butter, guys? Butter? Mantequilla. Mantequilla, exactly. Mantequilla. Exactly, mantequilla. So butter is an uncountable noun. Entonces yo sí me quiero, no se puede referir uno a plural eh, como butters. It's impossible. No existe, okay? It doesn't exist. So it only has one form, and this form is singular. Example. Sugar, no decimos sugars. Water, no decimos waters. No, solo tienen su forma singular. Then we have always used the singular verb. O sea que aquí con los uncountable yo no puedo ocupar are. Sugar are delicious. No, sugar is delicious. Sugar is sweet. Número uno, porque no los puedo usar en forma plural. Y número dos, porque la regla dice que hay que usarlos con la forma del verb to be singular. ¿Ok? No tiene sentido que digamos use sugar como singular y que ponga are. Doesn't make sense. So, only singular form y siempre usamos el singular verb. Sugar is delicious. Water is healthy. Um, air is necessary to live okay and then this this is very important we cannot not possible we can't do it we can't use a and or a number before them no se puede por ningún motivo que usted utilice uno de los artículos a o an o que le ponga un número antes. A rice, un arroz. A bread, un pan. Dos arroz, dos pan. No, we can't use that way or we can't say that. Once again, las uncountable nouns, por ser incontables, tienen una sola forma y esa forma es singular. ¿Ok? ¿Se entiende la parte de los uncountable? Yes, sure. Yes. Okay, very good. Any questions right now? No, no questions? questions? No questions. Very good. Okay, okay, very good. <clears throat> now, let's see. Um, Tati, Tati, help me reading this part, the purple part. Con uncountable nouns are often. Ayúdeme con abstract ideas, please. Solo con abstract okay. ideas. Okay. Uh, uncountable nouns are often. Abstract ideas. Canon coach. Love, freedom, education. Look, help, beautiful. Music, it's under. Okay. Thank you, Tati. Fatima, help me with made of smaller parts. Sugar, sweet, salt, sun, flour, dirt, dust, traffic, grass, spaghetti. Okay, thank you. Mr. Wilmer, help me with some food, please. Some food cut into small parts. Brill, fish, cheese, chocolate, meat, bacon, full, ham. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, Grecia, help me with liquids and gases, please. Water, milk, wine, oil, coffee, rain, soap, air, smoke, blue, and fog. Juice and fog, very good. Uh, Irene, Irene, help me with materials, please. Glass, paper, gold, silver, ice, iron, cotton, gold, steel. Okay, very good. 
And the last part, I'm gonna read this one. It says, be careful. Uncountable nouns in English. Estos que vemos acá son uncountable only in the English language. Pero hay en otros eh, lenguajes que sí son countable. We have furniture. What is the meaning of furniture, guys? Muebles. Muebles, right? In Spanish, we say muebles, plural. But in English, we only say furniture. We don't say furniture. That is not correct. Then we have advice. Do you know what is advice? Advertencia. Eh, no la escuché, Irene. Can you repeat? Advertencia no es. Advertencia no. Algo así es similar. What is advice, guys? This word? Advice? No? Consejo. Consejo, Avisa. exactly. Consejo. Nosotros decimos necesitas consejo with S, which is plural. But in English, we don't say advices. Si usted quiere decir necesitas consejos, you need some, some advice. Cuando se queda referir a los consejos como en plural, some advice. Y si quiere hablar de un consejo, como a estos no les puedo poner la A al principio, I can say a piece of advice. Cuando se quiera referir al singular, all right? No, quiero, no puedo decir an advice, that is not possible. <clears throat> Then we have work, news, information, luggage. Do you know what is luggage? Equipaje. Equipaje, exactly, very good, luggage. Then we have over here, um, money. Well, we know money, what money is. Okay, my friends, I want to know if we are clear with this part. Todo lo de los countable and uncountable nouns is clear? Teacher. Yes, tell me. Y si yo quiero decir una libra de azúcar, eso está malo, ¿cómo? Mm, very good point. Ahorita voy a eso. Okay, nice. let, me, let me just stop this and I'm going to share another screen. Um, where is the whiteboard here? Okay. Okay, presenting. Okay, so creo que fue Caro de la pregunta, right? Okay, very good question, Caro. So guys, con los countable, uncountable nouns, sorry, something happens. Okay, uncountable nouns. All right. Uncountable nouns in general, We cannot count them, right? Yo no puedo contar toda el agua del mundo. The agua, the water of the ocean, I cannot count it, right? For example, we have water, we have milk, we have sugar. Eh, what else? Bueno, vamos a quedar con esos tres ejemplos. Water, milk, and sugar. So, los uncountable, así como los ven, water, milk, sugar, esto no se puede contar. Pero, como decía eh, Caro, las medidas de estos uncountable nuts, eso sí lo puedo contar. For example, water in general, yo no puedo decir, no puedo contar el agua, right? Lo que sí puedo contar son, for example, bottles of water. Liters of water. Eh, no sé, etc. Litros, botellas, eso sí lo puedo contar. Pero son como las medidas de cada cosa. El agua en general, no. Pero el, la medida de el agua, sí lo puedo contar. Ok. So we have uh, bottles, liter. Then what else? Gallons. Gallons of water. So this I can count it of water. Vaya, esas son las medidas como para el agua. Okay. Bottles of water, liters of water, gallons of water. Y esto mismo, por ser líquido, también aplica para el milk, right? 
milk in general, I cannot count all of the milk in the world. Lo que sí puedo contar es las medidas de bottles of milk. Liters of milk, que así se la venden en el super, right? Le venden los galones de leche. Eso sí se puede contar. Pero a qué le va, qué es lo que va a ser plural cuando ocupemos la medida? Lo mismo, no va a ser plural milk or water of sugar, sino que la medida. For example, bottles of water. Eso va a ser plural. Eh, liters of milk. Es eso. Lo, la medida, lo que va a ser plural si se está refiriendo a varios. Then we have sugar. In sugar we have, for example, um, bolsas, bags of sugar. Bags of sugar. ¿Cómo se decía cucharada? La semana pasada lo vimos. ¿Cómo se decía cucharada? Do you remember? Hello? Nobody, oh my God, no estuvieron en la clase. Tablespoons. Tablespoons, exactly. Tablespoons of sugar. Cucharadas de azúcar. Bags of sugar, tablespoons of sugar. Pounds of sugar, libras de azúcar, etc. Kilos. So, sorry, Tati. Kilos, ¿cómo se diría? En inglés, kilos. sería igual. Kilos. Yeah, kilos. igual. kilos of okay. sugar, yeah. Kilos of sugar, y etc., etc. Ok. So, recapitulando. Estos, water, milk, sugar, y cualquier uncountable noun, no va a dejar de ser, dejar de ser uncountable noun. Pero sí hay una manera de contarlos y es por las medidas para contar. Dependiendo de lo que esté midiendo, of course. Por ejemplo, water, tenemos liters, gallons, etc. ¿Ok? Luego tenemos sugar, pounds, tablespoons, kilos, etc. Eh, así que sí, eso en general no. Pero sí las medidas de. Así que si yo le, por ejemplo, si yo les pregunto a ustedes. How much sugar do you want in your coffee? This question. How much, oops. No sé por qué se agregó este círculo. Okay, let me put it here. How much sugar do you want in your coffee? How much sugar do you want in your coffee. Vaya, ¿cuántas cucharadas le pone usted al café? Vaya, in my case, one tablespoon of sugar. Teacher, a mí me gusta bien dulce, yo le echo tres. Ok. Three tablespoon, table Spoons of sugar. La pregunta, si se fijan, está como uncountable, right? Porque para hablar de los uncountable siempre vamos a usar how much. How much sugar do you want in your coffee? One tablespoon of sugar. La, el azúcar, si se fijan, seguimos respetando la regla de no ponerle S y no ponerle un número. Pero, ¿qué es lo que voy a modificar o qué le voy a agregar? Entonces, la medida. One tablespoon. A este sí le puedo poner números y le puedo poner ese, if you see. Three tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of sugar. Eh, y así sucesivamente, guys. Con cualquier uncountable noun que se les ocurra. We can't count them in this way. Con las medidas sí se pueden contar. Do you have any questions? Teacher, y en el caso de bread. Slices. Decirte? Slices. Oh. O sea, las rebanadas de pan. Slices of bread. This is. Así es con el pan. Slices. Slices of bread. O sea, las rebanadas. 
Aplica también slices para el queso, slices of cheese, slices of ham, del jamón también. Eh, la carne también, slices, creo que ese sí es slices, quiero ver. ¿Cuál es la medida para la carne, guys? Filete, filete. Filete, fillet. Steak. Yeah, fillet of meat. Or steak of meat. So that is going to be for bread and for liquids. ¿Se entiende esa parte, guys? No sé si les queda a todos claros de, de cómo se puede contar algo incontable. Yes. Sí, solamente una consulta. ¿Se podría preguntar directamente cuántas cucharadas de azúcar quieres en tu café? Yeah. How many tablespoons of sugar do you want in your coffee? Sí, se puede. Yeah. How many tablespoons of sugar do you want in your coffee? Así gracias, sería. gracias. Okay. Any other questions? ¿Cómo se diría sin azúcar? No sugar. No It's sugar. No sugar. Ah, okay. Yeah, no sugar. Thank you. Eh, how many? ¿Cómo tables? sería, digamos, media porción, media cucharada o media rebanada? Half, I will say half tablespoon of sugar. How many tablespoons of sugar and half tablespoon. Bueno. Hold on, hold on. La cucharada es la grande. Entonces, si usted está hablando de la mitad de eso, puede ser one teaspoon. Teaspoon. Que esa es como la cucharadita, que creo que van a ser la mitad de la cucharada. Está la cuchara grande, la normal, y está la más chiquita, que creo que es para postres. Entonces, la tablespoon es la grande. Así que si usted quisiera decir como la mitad de eso, yo le recomendaría decir one teaspoon. Spoon, así se llama, teaspoon, que es cucharadita, que viene a ser la mitad de la cucharada. O podría decir half tablespoon. Pero yo le recomendaría más one teaspoon. Any other questions, guys? Hello, hello. No question, teacher. We're good. It's all, It's all clear. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Excellent, my friends. So let me. ¿Quieren captura de esto en el WhatsApp? De esa pantallita. Yes, please. Okay. Sí. One second. One second. Okay. So let me send it to the group. And where is the group? Okay. All right. There you go. Okay, uh, so we are all clear with this topic. Si todos lo entendemos, estamos claros, we're good? Yes. Everybody, okay, excellent. Okay, so let me start sharing again. Okay, I'm gonna open an activity so we can learn a little bit about the countable and uncountable nouns. Is here. Okay, my friends, do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, now guys, you will see a picture Uh, of a countable and uncountable noun and you will tell me if it's countable or uncountable a potato countable. Countable. okay countable. pasta countable 
Uncountable or uncountable? Uncountable. Uncountable? Yes, it's uncountable. Very good. What about pineapple? Uncountable. Very good. What about sandwich? Uncountable. Okay. What about juice? Uncountable. Uncountable. Si yo quiero hacer juice, countable, ¿qué podría decir de esta foto? How can I say this in countable? Of the, of the juice. Of the juice. By a juice in general is uncountable. Pero miren esta foto. ¿Cómo podemos expresar esta foto? How can we express it? A glass, ajá, uh -huh. a glass of juice. of juice, exactly, a glass of juice, un vaso de jugo, así lo hacemos contable, all right, a glass of juice, very good. Okay, so what do we think about tomato? Uncountable. 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 No, contable or uncountable, oh, me contable. Contable. sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, blueberries. Contable. Contable. Very good. Now we have uh, cherry. Contable. Contable. Do you like cherries, guys? Yes. Yes. Very, yes. Yeah, they're yes. very, very good. They're so delicious. Okay. Apple. Contable. Contable. Okay. Okay, what about butter? Uncountable. Oh, very good, uncountable. Now we have floor. Uncountable. Uncountable, excellent. Now we have garlic. Uncountable. Uncountable. Garlic is uncountable. Sugar. Uncountable. This is like a teaspoon, I think. Meat. Uncountable. 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 Pepper. Uncountable. Now we have bread. Uncountable. Uncountable. Bread is uncountable. But this, esto que ven acá, estos son slices. Slices, slices rebanadas. So, estas rebanadas, sí las puedo contar. I can count this. So, slices of bread. Now we have tea. Uncountable. Uncountable, very good. Now we have biscuit. Biscuit. Uncountable, yes, a biscuit or a cookie. Milk. Uncountable. Uncountable. This is what I was telling you. Milk in general, no, but a bottle of milk, yes. A glass of milk, yes. So, milk in general is uncountable. Now we have water. Uncountable. Uncountable. Very good. Oil. Uncountable. Uncountable. Very good. Now we have lemon. Uncountable. Uncountable. Very good. Over here we have Carrot. Contables. Very good. Let's go with cheese. Contables. Contables. Cheese. Are you sure? It's uncountable. Porque lo que podemos contar son las slices of cheese. Okay? Cheese in general is uncountable. Eh, onions. Countable. 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 Yeah, very good. We can count onions. Fish. 
my friend so we will continue with this topic very easy it's very short and very easy teníamos que aprender los countable y los uncountables para poder entender esto okay we will talk about there is and there are okay uh, let me see Karin, Carolina sorry can you help me reading the definition Caro, please. I think she's not here. Uh, let's see. Ronald, read the definition, please. We use theory and theory or to say that something or someone exists. Exists. Very good. Exists. There is, there are. There is, there are. Okay. So we use these words, there is, there are, to say that something or someone exists. So sea de la existencia de algo, okay? And now, let's take a look to positive sentences with there is and there are. It says, we use there is for singular and there are for plural. Si se fijan, el is, acuérdense en el verb to be, es cuando hablamos de algo singular. Y there are siempre va a ser para algo plural. Ok. So, there is cuando hablo de la existencia de algo singular. And there are cuando hablo de la existencia de algo plural. O sea que hay algo. All right. Um, Ingrid, read example number one, please. There is one. Number one. There is one table in the classroom. Okay, very good. Carla Abigail, example number two, please. There are three chairs in the classroom. Very good. Uh, Gonzalo, number three, please. There is a spider in the bath. Very good. René Alejandro, number four. There are many people at the bus stop. At the bus stop. Very good. Bus what stop. is bus stop, guys? What is that? Parada de bus. Parada. La parada de bus. Exactly. Exactly. What is a spider? Araña. Araña. Very good. They even a spider man. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Very good. So. We use there is for singular and there are for plural. Aquí tenemos there is one table in the classroom. Hay una mesa en el salón. There are three chairs in the classroom. Hay tres sillas. Basically, that's the way we're going to use there is and there are for positive sentences. Do you have questions about this part, the positive sentences? Hello? 
Hello, hello. Any questions about this? No, no. teacher. No. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Let's go with the next one. We also use there is with uncountable nouns. Look at this. Vayamos conectando todo. Acuérdense que los uncountables no se pueden usar en forma plural y se deben usar con el verb to be is. Entonces yo puedo decir there is milk in the fridge. Hay leche en el refri. There is some sugar on the table. Hay algo de, de azúcar en la mesa. There is ice cream on your t-shirt. Hay helado en tu camisa. Yes, el there is lo podemos usar con uncountable nouns. Siempre y cuando no estemos hablando de la medida de este countable, de este uncountable noun. Si yo dijera, hay cuatro botellas de leche en la refri, tendría que ocupar there is or there are. What do you think, guys? There are. There are. There are four bottles of water in the fridge. Very good. Very good. So, there is. We also use it with uncountable nouns. Are we clear in this part? Yes. Okay, very good. So let's move to the next one. Okay, over here we have contractions. Uh, let's see. Oops, sorry, sorry. I was trying to look. Mm, Fatima, can you read the contractions, please? All of the slides. The contraction of there is, is there. There's a good song on the radio. There is, there's only chocolate left in the book. You, sigo. Sí, please, yes, continue. You cannot contract, there are, there are nine cats on the roof. There are only five weeks. Until my birthday. Until my birthday. Very good. So, ¿qué se puede contraer? There is. Se puede contraer así. There's. There's. Apostrophe in letter S. There is a good song on the radio. There is only one chocolate. Chocolate left in the box. O sea, solo queda un chocolate. And then we have you cannot contract there are. El there are no se puede contractar. En positive, ¿ok? En negative sí se puede hacer una contraction. Pero en positive tiene que ser así. There's in for there are if there are. ¿Ok? We cannot make a contraction for that. There are nine cats on the roof. There are only five weeks until my birthday. Uh, any questions about this? No. We're good. No questions. Ok. Ok, let's continue, guys. Now let's take a look to the negative form. Um, Irene, Irene, can you please read the this part and also the examples? Negative four. The negative is form but put not after if or are. There is not a horse in the field. There are not eight children in the school. There is not a tree in the garden. There are not two elephants in the zoo. In the zoo. zoo. Very good. Okay, so if we want to make a negative form for there is, está bien fácil. Solo tenemos que agregar el not después del verb to be. There is not, there are not. Okay? And for these ones, si podemos contractar ambas. ¿Cuál creen que sería la contracción para there is not? There is isn't. There, there isn't. isn't. Very good. What about there are not? There are not. There, 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 there aren't. Exactly. Very good. Very, very good, guys. Um, is everything clear in the negative form? Yes. yes We're good. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Now let's go with the questions. Uh, let me see, Daniel Alexander. Can you read the questions and the examples, please? Okay, teacher. Uh, questions. To form a question, we place is or are in front of, of verb. 
Is there a dog in the supermarket? No, there, there isn't. Are there any dogs in the park? Yes, there are. Is there a security guard in the, in the shop? Yes, there is. Are there any polar bears in Antarctica? No, there are. Is there any ice cream in the freezer? Yes, there is. Okay. The pronunciation for this, security guard. Okay, security guard. Very good. So, when we make questions, we are going to put is or are before, o sea, antes de la palabra there. Okay, no sería there is, sino que we switch it. Is there a dog? Are there any dogs? Is there a security? Are there any polar bears? Etc. Okay. Uh, is this part clear for all of you guys? Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good, my friends. So let's move on. Ahora vamos con some and any. Okay. Ya han escuchado el uso de some and any. Yo creo que sí, no. más o menos, algunos, right? So, we use some and any with plural nouns, plural, and with uncountable nouns. Some is generally used in positive sentences, o sea, some lo voy a usar casi que, bueno, únicamente para positivas. I want some sugar. I need some milk. Okay, and any is generally used in negative or in questions. Examples. I have some information about your flight to Paris. Acuérdense que information is algo uncountable, right? Entonces, some information. Y luego tenemos any para negativo. I don't have any information about your flight. Acuérdense, information is uncountable. Y lo vamos a utilizar entonces con negative. I don't have any information. I didn't see any dogs outside. Así vamos a utilizar some with positives and any with negatives y con questions. Um, eso es como general information. Let's take a look to more examples. Ahora vamos a ver las preguntas con questions. Eh, sorry, some and any. Tenemos generally we use any in questions. Como les decía, any most of the time se ocupa para questions. Pero tenemos tres escenarios en los que podemos ocupar some en preguntas. Some is used in questions in the following scenarios. When we are offering something. Cuando usted le ofrece algo a alguien. Por ejemplo, en su casa llega una visita y usted dice... Quiere agua, quiere café, right? Oh, would you like some coffee? Would you like some water? En este caso no vamos a ocupar any. Ocuparíamos some. Porque se está ofreciendo algo. That's the scenario number one. Do you want some sugar for your coffee? Then we have a scenario number two. When we are asking for something, cuando nosotros estamos pidiéndole algo a alguien. Would I have some salt, please? ¿Podría tener un poco de sal? Can I have some fries with that? ¿Me podrían dar un, un poco de papas con eso? Is in error number two, when we are requesting something. Cuando somos nosotros los que pedimos algo. Ahí vamos a ocupar some in questions. En el scenario number three, when we are suggesting something. Cuando nosotros estamos sugiriendo algo. Why don't we watch eh, why don't we watch some movies on TV tonight? ¿Por qué no vemos algunas películas? Why don't you give her some advice? Eso es lo que les decía del advice. Some advice. This is the way we're going to use advice como por decirlo en plural. Okay? Some advice. No se refiere a uno, sino que se refiere a algunos consejos. ¿Por qué no le das algunos consejos? So, recapitulando. Any generalmente es el que usamos en preguntas, pero vamos a poder usar some en pregunta en estos tres escenarios. Cuando le ofrecemos algo a alguien, cuando nosotros pedimos algo o cuando nosotros sugerimos algo. 
Okay. Any questions about this? I have a question. Tell me. Teacher, es eh, el donde vamos a utilizar el 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 any any cómo es? Any. Any. ¿Dónde any. lo utilizaríamos? ¿Cómo dónde? ¿En qué escenario o la posición Ajá, en de que, la oración? No, en, ¿En qué escenario y la posición donde lo vamos a ubicar? Vaya. Eh, any se ocupa para negatives y también para preguntas en la mayoría de los casos. Aquí tenemos unos ejemplos. Do you know any film, any famous people? ¿Conoces a alguien famoso? Do you know, do you have any children? ¿Tienes niños? This is the way we're going to use any. Position. Eh, no hay una estructura bien definida como para la position, siempre y cuando que tenga sentido. Do you know any famous people? En este caso creo que tendría que ir antes del noun que está utilizando. En este caso, famous people is my noun. Children is my noun. Entonces, en el caso de usarlo en la oración, va antes del noun, antes del sustantivo. Ahí vamos a poner any. Y scenarios, eh, once again, en la mayoría de preguntas, las excepciones con usar son en preguntas son estas tres que ven acá. Y también aquí tenemos any para negatives. I don't have any information. Once again, aquí está el noun y aquí está any. Así que la posición de any en una oración tendría que ser antes de el noun que vaya a utilizar, antes del sustantivo. That will be the position for any. Uh, okay. uh, did I answer your question? Hello? No. ¿Le respondí o no le quedó claro? Sí, sí, sí. Ok. Por eso le quedó ok. Ok, Perdón. ok. No le escuché. I'm sorry. Ok, very okay. good. Any other questions, guys, about this? Yo tengo una pregunta, teacher. Tell me. Y, y perdón que no me respondió la compu cuando me preguntó. Ok, no problem. Eh, en esa oración, do you know any famous people? Ajá. Uh -huh. eh, puede sustituir por alguien any. ¿O qué vendría siendo any? Porque son es algo, ¿verdad? Ajá. Uh -huh. ¿Y any cómo se puede traducir? Porque eh, alguien famoso no sería somebody. Any viene a ser como cualquier o cualquiera. That is the meaning of any. ¿Conoces cualquier famoso? Ese vendría a ser como el significado de any. Y podemos sustituirlo. Do you know somebody that is famous? Así sí lo podríamos sustituir. Pero somebody, somebody famous people, no. Sino que tendría que ser do you know somebody? Do you know? Do you know somebody, somebody that is famous? Así, sí lo podríamos usar. But other than that, o sea, quitar el any y poner como somebody, do you know somebody famous people? No. Just in that siendo, way. Ok, vendría siendo como cualquier, entonces. Cualquier o cualquier, yes. Gracias. Okay, very good. Any other questions, guys? No questions. Okay. No questions. So let's move on, my friends. Ya hicimos este quiz, que es fue el de los countable and uncountable nouns. Now we're going to do uh, an activity for there is and there are. Okay. So we have this one. It says there an armchair in the living room. What would be the correct option there, guys? There uh -huh. is. There, 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 is. there is? There is an armchair. Very good. Un sillón. There children in the bedroom. Look at this. Do we have children or we don't have children here? Children here. Aren't. There aren't. There aren't children in the bedroom. There a bus in the bathroom. There is. There is a bus in the bathroom. Very good. 
Then we have five chairs in the dining room. Let's count. There, One, there, two, three, there, four. There, so we have there, four or five. There, 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 there are or there aren't? There, there are. aren't. There aren't. There aren't. Because we have one, two, three, four, and here it says five. So there aren't. There aren't. Very good. There are four chairs in the bedroom, in the kitchen, or in the basement. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. In the kitchen. The kitchen. 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 Do you know what is basement? Kitchen. Cocina. Oh, no, no. Kitchen. No, kitchen is cocina. Basement. What is basement? I don't know. Sótano. Sótano. Nosotros no tenemos sótano, right? Tenemos eh, cocheras. Maybe, maybe most of the time we have uh, parking. Okay. There isn't a car in the garage, in the basement, or in the roof. No hay un carro. ¿A dónde? ¿Qué es esto? What is this? In the roof. In the roof, no hay un carro. A donde, a donde no hay un carro. In the roof, in the garage, in the estamos A, B, or C, a garage, the roof. How do you, what is the roof? This one over here. Here, this is the roof, el techo. This is okay. So there is in the garage or in the two. garage let's see yes in the garage because we have two no there is two no there are there are two mm. there isn't a car in the garage aquí cuál sería la correct the correct conjunction and but or or but but exactly but there are two then we have there are in chairs armchair this said no hay sillas but 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 armchair but no and, or, 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 or and, porque and, este es un couch uh, okay an armchair uh, es así uh, como las que les enseñaba acá the uh, first one uh, this is an armchair this one okay um, and in the picture here, we have, this is a couch or a sofa. Because these are dead okay. iron chairs or armchairs. Okay, in the next one we have, there are three lamps, a big clock. And, and, and a big clock, very good. And in the last one, my friends, we have, a washing machine in the basement. Are there or is there? Is there? Are there? Are there? Is there? What is, is there? a washing machine? Lavadora. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Is there a washing machine in the basement? Very good. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So let's go back to the presentation. And now. We're going to do a little bit of talking. Ahora sí nos va a tocar. Apply. We have to apply the scenario. Sorry. We're going to do a little bit of talking. It says create a role play. Pongamos atención a la instrucción para que en los breakout rooms ya, sabemos, ya vamos a saber qué hacer. It says create a role play. Van a crear un role play. Un role play es como, como un diálogo, una dramatización, ¿ok? Entre su grupo. With your classmates in which you have to use the different quantifiers that you learned today. Some and any se llaman quantifiers, ¿ok? Eh, también... There is or are, todo lo que aprendimos de countable and uncountable nouns, tiene que crearse una conversation, un diálogo, un role play en lo que puedan utilizar eso. Todo lo que aprendimos hoy. And I have an example for you. For me, for teacher Kim, the easiest example is con una receta, porque con la comida es que aplica todo esto, ¿ok? Uh, let me see. I'm going to need a volunteer. Um, 
Kaori, can you read letter A, please? Okay, uh, let's cook something today. That's a great idea. What do you have in mind? We can cook a salad. Sounds great. Let me check if we have enough ingredients. Sure. If there are not enough ingredients, we can go to the supermarket. Okay. So we have some tomatoes, uh, onions, but we don't have any lettuce. And so we should buy, buy lettuce and some chicken. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Kaori. So... This is an example of a very short conversation. La de ustedes va a ser más larga, ¿ok? Don't worry. Mi consejo es que lo puedan usar como con comida, con que estén cocinando alguna receta, porque para mí es la manera más fácil de usarlo. Pero si a usted se le ocurre otro escenario en la que puedan usar some, any, there is, and there are, it's not a problem. Yo lo que necesito es que en una conversation lo usen. ¿Cómo es your option? And it's... Your, your team is your decision, okay? Vaya, recapitulando. We will go to breakout rooms. Vamos a ir a breakout rooms y vamos a crear un diálogo entre todas las personas que sean en el grupo. Si le toca con tres, entre los tres. Si le tocan dos, entonces entre los dos. Vamos a crear un diálogo en el que usemos some y any y there is and there are, okay? Y quiero que cada persona que esté en el grupo, ya sean tres o dos o cinco o cuatro, diga al menos cinco líneas de diálogo. ¿Ok? Al menos cinco oraciones tienen que decir lo que está en su grupo. ¿Ok? Um, ¿Is everything clear? ¿Se entiende lo que vamos a hacer? Yes. 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 Ok. Very good. So, uh, let's work on the activity. Let me see. I'm going to create. Groups of three people. Se van a ir tres cada uno. All right. So let's open the rooms. And you're going to have 10 minutes to prepare your conversation. Le voy a dar 10 minutes. Y luego la van a decir acá in the class. Okay. So let's hurry up.
is hungry. Hungry. At C. Uh -huh. Hungry. E R Y. E. Puedo decir, I, eh, yo pienso que compremos pastel y pizza. Estaría bien así. O podemos poner, este, I'm going, que digas, I'm, I'm going to supermarket. Y nosotros ¿No? decimos. Y de ahí, ok, eh, y empezamos a describir las cosas que va a comprar. Ok, please, buy. Any. Um, 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 Sí. Ok, please buy some cakes. Ahí, ahí estamos en, en la respuesta de la tercera persona. Ok, la tercera persona nos puede responder sí o no. Digamos, en mi caso, sugiero que la tercera persona diga no, vayan solo ustedes. Para no. posterior decirle, eh, podríamos ir los tres y nos ayudas a traer más cosas. Pero no creo que sea buena idea porque tendrías que participar en el diálogo. A menos que... Porque se supone que vamos a utilizar el son any theater. Va, hay una data. Eh, ¿Qué más? Mm. Tres cucharaditas o tres cucharadas de aceite. Ah, sí, una cucharada, ¿eh? pero bueno. Pongamos las tres días. ¿eh? Cebolla, pongámosle. Tres cebollas. <risa> Queso. Dos chiles verdes. Y hasta ahí pongámosle, porque tampoco vamos a... Vaya, vamos a ahorita. Vaya, vamos a ver.
-huh. Ajá. Entonces lo dejamos así. De esta, ay, de esta manera. Uh -huh. Va. Digo yo. Y vaya, aquí digamos que porque son cinco líneas, creo que dijo la teacher, ¿verdad? Que cada uno tiene que... Ajá, cada uno, pero... Quiero ver, Mantente. voy a llevar una, dos... Es... Need. N... What is need? Es solo que aquí aparece otra E y otra D. Needed. 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 Ajá, que se necesita. Y ponerle la... la... Ah, pero ahí está formulando, no, 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 o sea, estamos respondiendo con otra pregunta. Sí, pero no importa. Vaya, vaya, entonces pongamos que se necesita. Lo voy a, lo voy a poner, no, al principio para. No te sale, ah, vaya, ahí está. Sería para. No, what is need. Ajá, no, what is need. Bueno, y uno para irme, para que. Vaya, Neither. vaya, ves, ahí aparece, ve, la, la teacher ha puesto, Ponel, a ponerle la D que le falta. Uh, en el Neither, te falta la D, ajá. La D. La D. Vaya. Ponle abajo. Okay, my friends, we're back. Very good, very good. Thank you so much for practicing. Uh, did you finish the conversation? No. Yes? No? No. Somebody? No, 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 no
Oh my god, nadie termina. Ah, sí, no. No, no, teacher. Um, es que no tenemos okay. ningún ejemplo para ello. Morta, hay morta. No, no, no. Uh, ok, hold on, let's do something. Mm. Let me send this conversation, the example I have here, to the WhatsApp group. And get ready with your team for tomorrow, ¿ok? Espérenme, les voy a mandar quiénes son los grupos para que sepan con quién tienen que comunicarse. Y para ponerle empeño y responsabilidad, va a ser, esa conversation va a ser la tarea de la semana. Así que va a tener nota, ¿ok? Ok. Hey. These okay. are the members of the group. Ahí se los mando en Zoom. Sorry, en WhatsApp. Eh, text each other. Manden su WhatsApp eh, para ponerse de acuerdo. Si les quedó como la carrera, lo pueden volver a hacer y lo presentamos mañana. Eh, les mando el ejemplo de, de la conversation. Acuérdense que puede ser cualquier escenario en el que ocupe some y any, y there is, there are. Okay. Que se les haga más fácil. In my case, okay. for me, it's like a, re a receipt. O sea, una receta que se pongan aquí. Hey, let's cook something. Uh, we don't have any eggs, for example. We have to buy some meat, etc. That's easy for me. Tú que es lo más fácil. Pero si a usted se le ocurre otro escenario más creativo, donde ocupa esas dos cositas, we are totally good. Ok. And... Uh, Creo que tenía dos personas pendientes que iban a pasar ahora de la presentation. No sé si you're, you're ready, guys. Era Diego era uno y no me acuerdo quién era el otro chico. Yo era el otro. Daniel, right? Sí. Yo también, ah, Daniel. Sí, sí. ¿Qué me falta? Yo, teacher. ¿Y usted por qué faltó, pajarita? Yo ahora le, le iba a mandar la, la constancia a, a su número de WhatsApp porque hasta ahora me la dieron. Oh, ok, ok, vaya, miren, uh, I just have four minutes, así que los chicos, bueno, aquí veo a Diego, Daniel, ¿usted agregó su, su, su picture? Eh, yo había hecho una presentación pequeñita. Ah, ok, vaya, let's do something, ahorita tengo en la mano la de Diego, creo que va a alcanzar a pasar Diego hoy. Y mañana lo paso a usted, Daniel, y también a, uh, quiero ver, Irma, ¿ok? Porque ya, we just have four minutes, all right? So I'm going to present Diego's right now. Eh, ok, Diego, whenever you're ready. Okay, Hello. Ok, teacher. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Ok. No le escuchamos, Diego. I can't hear you. Hola, per teacher, perdón, es que, me es que tengo 2% de carga, pero espérame, permítame, permítame. Ok. We only have 3 minutes left. Eh, Daniel, no me abre tiene... Ya me abrió, ok. Ah, ok. Sí. Yeah. The celebrity is uh, Lionel Messi, and Lionel Messi follows a fairly strict diet of seven days a week. And Messi trains for two and a half hours after his, his breakfast. And Messi takes thermal showers to improve to improve uh, high muscle condition. Um, she has one day free form diet, uh, diet in the month. And Lionel Messi exercise three parts. And um, Messi has a spaghetti dinner three times a month. This includes yoga and swimming in his lifestyle. 
Lionel Messi has an underwater exercise routine on Friday. In, after each meal, Messi eats an apple or pear. Okay. Lionel Messi does not eat sugar two hours before bed. Okay, very good. That's it, eh, Diego. ¿Eso es todo, Diego? Uh, yes, teacher. Okay, very good. Can you okay. look at the chat, Diego? Ve al chat de Zoom. Ahí le puse just three corrections of pronunciation. Uh, the first one oh. is dieta. The pronunciation is diet. Okay? Diet. Then we have diet. mejorar. El verbo mejorar se pronuncia improve. 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 And okay. then we have the last one, horas. The pronunciation is like hours. Hours. Like hours. this. Ahí se lo puse todos en el chat. Uh, okay, thank, teacher, you. thank you. Thank you, Diego. Very good. And we are going to stop here. Uh, Mr. Daniel Alexander and Irma Abigail, mañana uh, when we start the class, Please connect, up, connect on time, sorry, and we will continue with your presentations, guys, all right? And for the rest, remember, guys, tienen ese diálogo, si lo hizo, se va a la carrera, entonces lo pueden volver a hacer, es evaluado, it's for this week's homework, acuérdense que tenemos como daily homework, eh, weekly homework, son cuatro, entonces esta va a ser la tarea de esta semana, all right? Um, any questions, guys, about the activity? No. no. We're good? Okay, no very good. I'm going to send the teacher. presentation. Yes, tell me. Eh, ¿Cuánto tiempo más o menos tiene que ser la conversación? O oh, no importa. Mire, tiempo, not too much, pero que cada uno diga sus cinco líneas. Ok, ok. Se puede okay. tardar, creo que sí. I don't know, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, depende de qué tan, qué tan rápido hablen, pero ya que van a tener el tiempito, guys, busquen la pronunciación de las palabras, ¿ok? Ingredientes no es ingredients, sino que ingredients, cosas así, ¿ok? Let's look for the pronunciation, y ahí tienen la presentación que vimos hoy, en the WhatsApp group, ya les va a caer. Thank you so much for joining, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye